Hey guys, my name's Kian Hushmand, and in today's video, I'm going to be going through some things that can instantly improve your guitar tone. Spoiler alert, it's not getting a better guitar or a better amp. Let's have a look. So for a little while now, I've been seeing the exact same question across heaps of different Facebook groups all over my Instagram, in my Instagram DMs, as well as the comments on my YouTube as well, and just in general everywhere. And to sum it all up, it's basically, how do I get better guitar tone? I never really like the guitar tone that I get. That question rings so true to me, and it's something that I've been working on for a very, very long time. And after many years of playing guitar, trying heaps of different softwares, you know, all that good stuff, it's really not so much about the guitar or the amp that you're using. The bulk of your actual guitar tone is not so much what gear you're using, it's how you're using it. And I'll get into those, but before we do that, if you guys like this video at any time, please feel free to leave a like and a comment on anything you see or hear. And if you want to see more of this stuff, definitely think about subscribing. If you guys want to support me directly, definitely check out my Patreon as well as all my affiliate links, all that stuff is in the description below. So in no particular order, ways to improve your guitar tone number one, getting it right at the source. <laughs> Now, a lot of people that I respect, really renowned engineers, um, really renowned guitarists, they all say the exact same thing and it's something that I've seen a lot of people not really regard as much. Getting your tone right at the source is absolutely crucial and it's one of the most important things that you can do to get a better guitar tone at all times. This reason kind of coincides with the other reasons that I'll get into a little bit later, but for now, we're just going to talk about a general hardware standpoint. This right here is my Jackson Mishiman Sewer USA guitar. It's loaded with boutique bare knuckle pickups. It's got all the best knobs, all the best pots that you can possibly get your hands on. The craftsmanship's absolutely amazing. However, as good as this guitar is, it really doesn't matter at all if the signal of this guitar is rubbish. In my context, I'm using a digital setup, so I run this into my interface and it goes into my computer. And I know a lot of people that watch this channel have the exact same setup, so it's probably better that I go through it that way. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that if I had this really, really nice guitar, but used a really crappy cable and plugged it into a really crappy interface that was clipping and all this other nonsense, it wouldn't matter how good the guitar is because it's always going to sound bad. And this goes the exact same way the other way around. So if you had a really inexpensive guitar, but the way it was going into your interface was absolutely pristine, it would honestly be better off than using one of these really fancy ones. The better that your signal of the guitar going into the computer is in this case, the better all your tones are going to be. It will translate better through all those different amps that you're using, it will sound better and it will just generally be better in the long run. The way that I have this set up in my computer is that I use a string source cable, so that's a really really nice cable, um, very transparent cable, goes into my DI box so I can have the most clear signal possible and that acts as a pad as well so it doesn't clip into the interface because this guitar is very very hot, even when the gain is all the way off on the instrument line, um, it still does clip a bit when I pick hard. And then from there, it goes from the DI box into my interface through an XLR cable or a balanced input, which means that I'm getting no noise artifacts and it's grounded and everything like that. With this setup, knowing that I spent more time investing into the cables and the hardware of getting my DI into the computer, I know that no matter how I play it, it's always going to be the best DI and the best translation of the guitar that I can possibly have at all times. So you've got all that set up, you're making sure you're using balanced cables, you know, everything's as clean as it can be, checking that there's no interference with any of your electrical inputs or stuff like that. That stuff's really important as well. Once you've got all that stuff out the way, now it's time to check out reason number two, the playability of your instrument. <laughs> So especially when recording guitar, the setup of the guitar is extremely important and it's nothing to be overlooked whatsoever. 
So when I have this guitar set up, I have it set up the exact way that I want. I have the string height set up properly. I have the pickup set up properly at the right height so they aren't too hot or um, too weak. Um, the bridge, the intonation is all set up, stuff like that. The general setup of your guitar is really, really important because to get better guitar tone, if the setup of your guitar is rubbish, for example, if you're playing and there's heaps of string rattle, um, fret buzz, all that stuff, the DI or the signal going into the computer or whatever you're going through, whether it's an amp or an interface or whatever it is, isn't going to sound good or it's just not going to sound the way that you intended it to be. It's even more important when you're recording because if you were to record something and the intonation was a little bit off or there was a little bit of fret buzz, you can't exactly just go to that little spot and just delete it and kind of mask over it. It just doesn't work like that. Like I said before, getting it right at the source, this kind of ties in with this point as well. To have a good tone, to have good DIs, to have good signal going into whatever you're using, um, it's really, really important that you get it right at the source, whether it's the playability of your instrument or the signal from your guitar into whatever you're using. I know a lot of people like having their strings super, super low to the fretboard. And while this is really handy for lead playing and stuff like that, I don't really find myself playing leads too often. I do enjoy playing leads, but it's not something that I really see myself doing. It's kind of like my forte. I'm generally more of a riff type of guy. Um, so with that in mind, I like having my strings just a little bit higher off the fretboard. So keeping in mind with the setup of my guitar and stuff, you know, having my strings just a little bit higher so that when I pick and stuff like that, it doesn't rattle against the fretboard as much or if anything at all, um, that really goes a long way into helping my tone. So in short, it's about all these little moves, making sure that the playability of your instrument is at its peak. So you can always have that reassurance that you're getting the best sound out of your guitar possible at all times before it even hits any gear. And then the last tip to improve your tone that kind of ties in with the second one as well, it is definitely one of the most overlooked points in general, is practice, practice, practice. probably heard it a million times before but people love saying that tone is in the fingers. I myself used to think that this was a little bit weird um, how would tone be in the fingers you know surely it's through the gear that you're going through surely that determines your tone but as time goes on I'm kind of understanding that notion a little bit more. If you have bad finger tone or just generally haven't practiced what you're recording enough you're gonna sound bad most of the time. Maybe not bad but you won't sound as good as the way you hear it in your head or the way that you intend it to be. So if you're playing a really funky riff and your hands are kind of just jumping around all over the strings making heaps of string noise, you know, it doesn't sound as clean as you'd like, or maybe your picking hand isn't as tight as you want it to be, your tone isn't going to be as good as you intend it to be. And this ties in with the setup and the playability of your guitar as well. For example, if you were doing heaps of sick lead runs, you wouldn't want to have your strings so high off the fretboard that you need to slam them down onto the fret every single time you want to do a quick run. One thing that you could do, for example, is adjust your touch to the fretboard, you know, maybe run a compressor so that you don't have to play as hard, have your strings lower to the fretboard so you can get nice and quick, easy lead runs with way less effort and better finger tone. And then if you're playing riffy stuff like me or just chugging on the lower strings, I know that when I pick hard, I get a better tone out of it and I'm getting the tone that I hear in my head. If I was to pick a really heavy section lightly, it just wouldn't translate as well as I'd like it to into the amp sim or into the amp or whatever I'm using. And it wouldn't sound as good as the tone that I hear in my head. And in that scenario, it wouldn't give me the tone that I intend to have. As much as you get your tone from gear and stuff, it's not the full story. The way you play, the intention of how you play, and the way your fingers move across the fretboard as well as your picking hand really, really, really go a long way into determining what you get out of the amp or whatever gear that you're using. You can pick and choose whatever you want, but it's the way you play your guitar that gets a sound out of the amp or whatever you're using. The guitar isn't gonna play itself. So yeah, those are my three tips on how to improve your guitar tone. If you guys like this video at any time, please feel free to leave a like and a comment on anything you saw or heard. If you have any other tips that can improve your guitar tone similar to these, definitely leave them in the comments and I'll check them out later. Again, if you guys want to support me and what I'm doing, definitely check out my Patreon and my affiliate links. All that stuff will be down below in the description. Massive thanks to all my Patreons. I could not make videos like this without you guys and I'm extremely grateful for everything that you do for me. But until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao.